Hello! I'm Butch Curry from Zombie Nirvana Games. Welcome to the 11th episode of Fantasy Cartography with Adobe Photoshop, the podcast where I share my favorite tips, tricks, and techniques to help you make cool maps for your role-playing games. In the last episode, I talked about using the displays filter to help wrap our drawing around the folds and creases of the paper background. And you'll recall that I used the displace filter on the layer mask for our buildings, which worked out fine because all we needed to do for them was alter their outside shape. What I neglected to talk about, though, was what to do if you need to change the appearance of a pattern layer's inside contents, like the ones we used on our tree layer. As you can see, if we zoom in here onto the trees a bit, and then run our displace filter on the tree layer mask, filter... Distort, Displace, using the default settings and the displacement map we created last week. We haven't really changed the appearance of the trees that much. We've just kind of affected the outside edge a little bit, where those trees appear. And that's not really the effect that we're looking for with Displace. So I'm just going to undo that. In order to get the effect that we want, we need to make the contents of this pattern layer editable. We can do that very easily just by going up to Layer, Rasterize, and selecting Fill Content. That is going to change this from a pattern layer into a layer that is filled with our tree pattern. That uh, pattern now is completely editable, so if we run the filter again, just by coming up to Filter and hitting Displace again, now you can see that was the effect that we really wanted all along. And because we still have our layer intact and our layer mask intact, let me zoom back out here, even at this point, if we decided to add more trees, we could just come back over to this layer's layer mask, grab a brush, and brush some more trees in. And in fact, these trees would already have that displace filter added onto them. We'll just take those back out, because we don't really want any trees there right now. There we go. Now, one other thing that I mentioned last week was that there's another tool we can use to help wrap our drawing around our paper. It's one of Photoshop's coolest techniques, but it's one that many folks, even seasoned Photoshop gurus, have never used. It's not an adjustment layer, it's not a filter, and it's not even a layer style. But one thing you should keep in mind is that this can be kind of a subtle technique, particularly if you're working with a low-resolution image, or, like me, you're showing someone how to do it on a low-resolution podcast. So this is one that you really want to try for yourself at home uh, in order to see the full benefits. So what is our mystery tool? It's called Apply Image. You'll find it by going up to the Image menu. We're going to show this on the Roads layer. So I'm just going to click on that and zoom in a bit uh, so you can get a really good look. You just come up here to the Image menu and then come down and select Apply Image. Now, if you're like me, you may have opened up this dialog at some point and then immediately hit Cancel because Apply Image doesn't do a very good job of explaining itself. In essence, what Apply Image does is allow you to combine a layer and a channel with another layer and channel. It merges them together in a really interesting way and gives you a lot of control over how that merging occurs by letting you change the blend mode and the opacity. So in the Apply Image dialog, the source is always going to be the file that you're working on. Uh, in this case, for our layer, we want to apply the paper layer onto our roads layer, which is the target, as you can see here. So we're going to come up here to the Layer drop-down and select layer 1, that's our paper layer. And as you can see, our roads layer has started to look a lot more like the paper layer. We don't want this to occur over the entire layer, just the roads themselves. So I'm going to come over here and click on Preserve Transparency. And that's going to allow it to affect only the non-transparent pixels on our roads layer. Now you just want to play with the blend modes and the opacity until you find one that you really like for your uh, merging. In this case, we want to pick up some of the highlights on the paper layer and put them onto the roads. The light uh, blend modes are really good for this. Uh, we're going to try soft light, 
hard light, and hard light looks pretty good. If the effect is too strong, you can just bring the opacity down. Right about there looks pretty good. And just hit OK. Now I'm just going to hit uh, Control Z just to undo that to kind of give you a before and after. So there's before, and there's after. You can see where those highlights have really come in. Now when you're using Apply Image, there are certain layers that you'll want to look out for. An example would be our lake layer. I'm just going to zoom out here a bit. Now if you were to use Apply Image, we'll just come up here and run that. Apply Image. And you can see it's got all the same settings we had before. The problem here is that our lake layer doesn't have any transparent pixels in it. It's filled with white and black. We've just disguised the white pixels by changing the blend mode of this layer to multiply. We don't want to have all of these shadows and everything here on our paper. So in order to prevent that, we really have to get rid of the white parts of this layer. So I'm just going to hit cancel here. I'm going to hide the other layers by holding down the Alt button and clicking on the I here. I'm going to come up here to Select, down to Color Range. I'm just going to click on the white part here, hit OK, and then Backspace to Delete. Control D to deselect, and then bring our other layers back in. Now I can come back up here to my lake layer, zoom in just a bit, and go to Image, Apply Image. And now you can see that we've done that without bringing all, all, bringing all of those other shadows in onto the paper. That's going to do it for this week. Next week, we'll take one final look at this map as we make a few final tiny adjustments. After that, I'll be taking two weeks off of the podcast to recharge my batteries and devote as much time as possible to finishing Volume 1 of the Fantasy Cartography book. When the podcast starts up again, there'll be a small scheduling change with the podcast becoming available on Monday afternoon rather than Sunday evenings. Don't forget to stop by ZombieNirvana.com for this week's show notes. Until next time, thanks for listening, and happy mapping! Will you go, Lassie, will you go?